In this video, I'll talk about creating your own table of contents menu. So I got a message from Anar. Anar asks how to create a content slide. I see it as a menu or table of contents as well. Uh, so whatever you want to call it, uh, what they're describing here is uh, they have an e-learning course with 50 or so slides, consists of five modules, and they would like to have a hidden slide which shows the content of the course where a learner can click and go to each module. So I think we can help you out here, Anar. This is a very simple table of contents solution. I should point out that there are also more complicated solutions as well that can involve uh, much more advanced actions that uh, change the state of your various objects and so forth. And I have other videos that talk about that. But let's just deal with this initial problem of creating a content slide, or in this case, a table of content slide. So I have uh, a basic uh, structure of a course here developed. I have a blank so slide, and you will see its purpose in a few moments. I have that table of content slide. I also have some regular content here. So I've just labeled these module one, module two, and module three. And nothing fancy here. There's simply a next button. And presumably you would put some content on the page. And you can even have more pages than, than what we visually see here. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just have the three pages. So the first thing we need to do is we want to make this table of content slide not visible to the regular uh, navigation that users will experience. So how we do that is we, we have this addition of a blank slide here and using the properties inspector on the actions tab, we're actually going to create a very small and simple advanced action. And this is uh, really straightforward here. We're going to execute advanced action and we're going to create a new script and this is going to be real simple this advanced action is going to be called skip underscore toc which is short for table of contents and all this does is it jumps to slide number three in this case and this is the first slide of module one so what this simply does is it just simply starts uh, when this page loads, this first blank page, it's going to just jump past slide number two and go straight to slide number three. That's all it does. This way that when you launch the course, you won't see the table of contents unless you want to. Now to create the table of contents, it's relatively easy. I'm going to use uh, Smart Shapes. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create one first. And I'm going to have nice wide buttons here. And we're going to choose some colors that are from the actual template that I'm using here, just to give it a nice look. And we'll make that 100%. And we'll call this one Module 1. I know you can't see that yet. And we'll just change the font color to white. And I'm going to change this to Arial. Uh, just because Arial is a web safe font, I like to use web safe fonts just as a precaution. Uh, unless, you know, of course, the organization that you're working for has specific branding needs, uh, it's generally a good best practice to, uh, to stick with web safe fonts, uh, depending on how you publish it, of course. I'm going to duplicate this because I need three of them. Before I turn them into buttons, I'm going to make the other two buttons that I need. Okay, so we have module two, module three. Let me just make sure they're all aligned properly. That looks good. So now I'm going to check off use as a button. And let's take a look at the state. Since specifically I'm interested in a rollover state. So to make a rollover effect, probably one of the easiest ways you can do is just make it a little bit transparent. And I can use state view if I prefer that. There's my rollover state there. 
Again, I'm just going to make it a little bit transparent. And the final one here, I'll select the rollover state from the object state menu here. And again, just make it 50% transparent so it has that neat rollover effect. So now our buttons are set up. We do need to assign an action for each one of them. So we go to the Properties Inspector and to the Actions tab. And from here, we can assign the appropriate action. So in this case here, I'm going to actually do them all in one shot. We're going to jump to slide three. I'm also going to check off the hand cursor. So there's another visual cue that users will see. They'll see that little hand logo or icon that lets them know that this is something clickable. And I'm not a fan of the built-in uh, click sound for Adobe Captivate, so I usually disable that. And all I need to do now is just change Module 2 to jump to the appropriate slide. And then Module 3 will jump to Slide 5. So that's pretty much it. Now there's, um, there's three buttons on this page. You could have five buttons that does the exact same thing. Um, there's a pause on all of these buttons halfway through the slide. And you can position that pause however you wish. Uh, it can only be on one button if you wish. The key thing is, is I don't want people to be able to click away from this particular slide unless they're going to one of these three modules here. So let's take a look at what we need on the remaining module slides. So I have my content here, but we need a way for users to get back to that table of content slide relatively easy. So I'm actually going to create uh, another button on this page, and it's just going to be a very simple button. I'm going to make it a little square button. Also going to choose those same colors that we chose for the buttons on the table of contents. And I'm going to place this in the upper left hand corner next to where the module title is. And in fact, I'm just going to, yeah, that looks fine. I'm going to add some text to it. And the text is just going to be TOC, which is short for Table of Contents. And we'll just select that. Or you can use whatever, um, whatever uh, acronym. You could put Menu. You could put, if you want to make the button a little larger, you can write out the full Table of Contents, something like that. And this looks OK. I'm going to bump up that font size just a tad bit. So there we go. Uh, let's turn this into a button, first of all. And we're going to go to the Actions tab. And we're going to have it jump to Slide. It's always going to be the same slide, slide number two. That's where our table of contents is. And we're going to check off the hand cursor and the Disable Click Sound. Again, just personal preferences on my part. Also, I'm going to make it a rollover effect. So I'm going to select the rollover state. And we're going to do the same thing as before. We'll just make it a little transparent, uh, just to, as a visual cue to let users know that that is the button for the table of content. Um, so here, it's pretty much it. You can copy this button to all remaining slides, or you can simply go to the timing slide, or timing tab rather, and select rest of project. And what that's going to do um, is allow the table of contents to appear on all the remaining slides automatically. And you just need the one copy of it. Its function will always be the same. So that's pretty much it. So let's just summarize what we've done. On the first blank slide, I've put a very simple advanced action that's going to automatically jump straight to slide three. And on from any slide in the course, users can now click on this table of contents button, which will jump to this slide here, which again, they won't see because they've clicked past it or they've navigated past it because of the advanced action on that first slide. From here, they can click on module one, module two, and module three. And as I said, there are some more advanced things that you can do. You can have little check boxes appear that indicate that you've already visited that module uh, using multi-state objects and advanced actions. You can do some, some really cool stuff. But here's the basics. Start off with that. 
and see how that works for you. Let's do a preview and see if this works as expected here. So we'll just do this in browser. Uh, one thing I would like to do, uh, because we are doing some advanced navigation, I would recommend that if you go into your project drop-down menu and select Skin Editor or Shift F11, you can turn off the playback control uh, because, of course, that would allow people to see all the slides in the course. And this way, they have to use the navigation that you created. Let's preview it now. Take a look at that in browser. So as you can see, the course has automatically skipped past the table of contents, and I can read the contents that are on the page. I can click Next to go to Module 2. And let's say I want to jump straight into Module 3. I can, of course, click Next through maybe potentially a whole bunch of slides, or alternatively, I can use my Table of Contents button, which will now bring me to this page here, and I can jump to Module 1. I can jump to Module 2 and so on. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.